It's all a blur now on BBC Two as a new series of The Ozone goes out in the country. First entered the charts with There's No Other Way. There's no other way, there's no other way. All that you can do is watch the Gareth Speed. Four years on, the band have released their new album, The Great Escape, which has already delivered the number one single, Country House. The Ozone gained exclusive access to the making of the video and revealed just what the connection is between Dead Sheep, artist Damien Hurst, and the new darlings of British pop. The Ozone charts the secret of the band's success. Damon and Graham met at school in Colchester in 1980. Eight years later, Graham met Alex at Goldsmiths College. Dave met Graham, who met Damon, and Blur was born. We were known as an indie band. It was because of a particular sound and like the end of about 1990, I suppose. It wasn't really the kind of music that we wanted to make. There were lots of kind of factors around at the time that were pulling us in various directions. And uh, it was really only our first album and we hadn't really sorted out in our own minds what we wanted to do. No Fed up with faking the scowls, the band were no longer content with the indie tag and had their sights firmly set on defecting to the glitzy world of pop. I think we've always aspired to being a pop band. Bands like Take That I made mean, people think of it as quite a nice thing to be pop. Blow released their first album, Leisure, in 1991 and followed it with Modern Life is Rubbish. But after a couple of dodgy gigs, it seemed Blur had fallen from grace with the British music press. But the band hit back in 1994 with a new sound, a new look and a new album, Park Life. Well, Park Life was really the album that captured the moment. I think that's the qualification for a great album, is for it to be of the time. The road to glory hadn't been easy. Boys and girls proved to be a crucial step in the right direction. So why did Blur's new sound spell sudden chart success? It's intelligent and it's pop as well. I think we've got a real interest in the job of, of London and um, we're like filling our music with the sort of, with its folklore. I get up when I want, except on Wednesday. Was there a reason for dropping those H's like they were going out of fashion? I don't actually speak in a Cockney accent. I do sometimes when I'm singing because I get into character and I sing about characters, but on Art Life, um, I didn't even sing on it. It's got the actor Phil Daniels because it was too extreme for me. Are you a frustrated actor at heart? Well, I went to drama school, but I wasn't very good. Uh, so, maybe this is just a, a, a way of sort of, yeah, relieving a bit of that. Well, Damon's uh, always creating characters, and he never people he sings about in his songs. that are sort of a mixture of him and the people he knows and the people he'd like to know. When success knocked on Blur's door, it knocked big time, and the band won a record four Brit Awards. It's good. <laughs> I, I, was, I mean, it was a wonderful, wonderful night. We felt that we've um, we paid our dues a bit, and um, you know, it, it's just up to us to sort of um, follow up on from that. <laughs> went from being a struggling music press band to being household names and that was that was that definitely took some doing just awards aren't they? Was, I, I mean it obviously does a lot of good I mean we became a focus of the tabloids for a while we've been quite lucky up until then I think would have been interested in this you've got a bit of a reputation as a party animal is that true I'm not really at all I just um, get my photo taken I mean, I've been stupid. I've been to some places where I know I shouldn't have gone. But, um, I'm not really a party animal. 
I don't think we are lads, really. I think we're more chaps than lads. Alex is the real party animal of the band. Where is the party? <laughs> It's no secret that Damon's girlfriend is Justine Frischman, lead vocalist with British pop band Elastica. No one was really very interested in what was going on with Damon, and all of a sudden it's an issue again. Is there a lot of pressure on trying to sort of maintain a relationship when. Uh, yeah, it's not easy. I mean, we haven't really seen each other this year, so um, it's hard to tell because <laughs> I haven't seen her. It makes people suspicious, I suppose, about you know, whether or not you're the genuine musician type or whether you're just a sort of uh, media thing but um, it's also a help because it's you know it's great for me to have someone to talk to about music who understands along with bands like pulp blur have been credited with spearheading the rebirth of british guitar pop people like pulp i think it's still important that they are around for English music. I do think that British music is better than it has been for a long time. And when we first started playing concerts again, it was a so-called shoegazing time, wasn't it? Yeah. And yeah. that was that was boring. That was dead boring. I still had spots and was studying for my own levels when Jarvis was in the band. I still got spots and shit. The rivalry between Damon and Suede's Brett Anderson was well chronicled, but the war of words between Oasis frontman Liam Gallagher and Blur has gone one step further. If we want to be the biggest band in the world, then we're going to do it, and that, don't be jealous of us. We've just got a different way of presenting ourselves. We're the best band <laughs> of art today on the planet. It's a fact. Liam likes to be more on your face than I do. But I'm hard. Damon did dress up as an old man. What was that? I think you'll have to ask him, though. No, it was a debt collector. That's what it was. It should have been fatter, though. And it wasn't the right mask. He looked a bit too scary. and looked more like a, a monster than a man. In June, Blur filled the Mile End Stadium with 25,000 fans. It was amazing. 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 <laughs> It was great because there was a lot of people there who'd never really been to a gig before, I don't think, or certainly one of that size because we're the first proper band of our generation to get to playing gigs that big and the atmosphere was par excellence. Here we go, then, Jimmy. Good in, Keith, David. Stay back So what do Dead Sheep, Damien Hurst, and the new lads of British pop have in common? Blur have called upon the talents of the UK's hottest artist, Damien Hurst, to direct the video for Country House. But is it art? It's his first video, and I suppose people probably wouldn't know who he is, but he's the man that put a dead sheep in a case and then got paid lots of money for it. What's the concept? I think it's all around a song, really. It's a kind of uh, neurotic pop stars buying big houses in the country. I and mean, I just did it as a board game and just went mad with it, really. So it was good. Graham and I were at college around about the same time and he was sort of part of a circle of, of people that we used to knock about with. Um, but he just put in a really good idea and that's what a good video is really. Anything I learn in doing a pop video will just go straight back into the art, I think. I'll be writing songs next. What's it like being directed by Damien Hurst? Fantastic. Bit of a hard task, man, though, I tell you. Well, this video is really kind of high art meets low art uh, on page three of The Sun in the pub. But it's sort of supposed to be quite silly. I love him. I mean, I like him as friends. I like his music. My brother and sister love him too. And my mum likes him. Are you a big Blair fan? Massive. Enormous. And I like Oasis as well. 
Two of Britain's most popular pop groups have begun the biggest chart war in 30 years. Blur and Oasis were at the centre of a massive record company hype when they both released their new singles on the same day. I think basically we released a single on the same day because uh, it was either that or a punch up. It seems that for Blur, the battle of the band's hype really paid off and the band reached number one with Country House. In the country. So, do Blur want to be the biggest band in the world? No. Biggest band in Britain, but not the biggest band in the world. Got a lot more hard work to do. I think they'd have to start becoming a hermit and things like that. I don't want to be a hermit. I'm quite happy picking my nose in taxis. <laughs> but they've got a phenomenal drive. It's quite tough getting ourselves to be the biggest band in the UK. So I'm quite proud of that. Did the band feel nervous about following the success of Park Life with the new album, The Great Escape? I'm nervous. I definitely felt pressure. Uh, but that was really an inevitable thing. I think if I hadn't, I'd have been something wrong with me. But the album has sold as many as Park Life and it's kind of done as well as that record did. It, the, the pressure's definitely there to come up with something as good, if not better. How does The Great Escape differ from Park Life? Well, I'd give you an overall picture of it being a lot darker and, and um, the characters are, are definitely succumbed to their, uh, to their darker sides. I think this album's kind of a lot more global sounding, though. It just is. Because, you know, we, when we started the band, we, were, we hadn't really travelled, any of us. And you, you, you go around the world once and you realise where you come from. And then if you go around the world a few more times, you start to think about the rest of the world. It seems that Blur haven't been very successful in transporting their British sound to America. It seems about the only way you can, you can do it in America is to sort of convincing that you're actually one of them. Which I'm not very good at. I walk funnily when I go to America, so I walk like, like um, Basil Fawlty. The success the Beatles enjoyed in America may so far have been elusive for Blur, but comparisons with the Fab Four continue. On Friday, the band even performed their very own rooftop gig in the centre of London. So how are the band enjoying the sweet taste of success? It's affecting our own outlooks and our own lifestyles. I think you just have to be slightly different and slightly better than everything else. It's very easy to sort of uh, get quite self-obsessed when you're a pop person like myself. And um, you can, you know, you can surround yourself with people who sort of tell you that you're, you're really great and sort of try and explain things to you, you know. But you, you can end up thinking the world completely revolves around you. The more success you have with doing your own thing, the more people leave you alone to get on with doing what you want to do.